Or was that like an annoyance? That hurt my neck. That was a stupid well, that's thing. That's what you do. get. No, that was That's stupid. what you get. Sprinkler. Who came up with that? Actually, the producers thought that would be a very good oh, idea if okay. I was stupid All righty, on the air, and I said, "Okay, yeah. you look stupid on the air." Now your neck is the first time. Welcome to the PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Broncos hire Vic Fangio, yeah. the Bucks hire Bruce Arians, and Zion Williamson dominates Wake. But we begin today, Wilbon, with your favorite whipping boy franchise, the Cleveland Browns. They just hired someone named Freddie Kitchens, who began this year as their running backs coach. And they fired Greg Williams, who was 5-3 and three as their interim coach, which is, which is the best record by any Browns coach in 12 years. Wilbon, does this feel like a better solution than the one they had at the end of the season? No, not particularly. If your quarterback has such a great relationship and respect for Freddie Kitchens, then, then make him the offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach. Yeah. All these hires, we're going to go through this because that's all we got today, and the news is, is coaching hires. They, no one coaches the whole team anymore. And I realize there's precedent for this back in the old days when you and I were young pups. Because guys like Joe Gibbs would say if we ask a question about the defense. Give it to Richie Pettibone. Give it to Richie Pettibone because he didn't deal with that. So this is not new. No, it's not. But now it's exclusive. Does anyone coach the entire team? So I didn't necessarily see this coming because I don't know of Freddie Kitchens. And until Todd Haley was fired, he had never been a coordinator in his life. I looked at Greg Williams and I thought, Okay, he's got an occasionally abrasive personality. I don't know what went on in that locker room, but I thought if anybody had earned it, he had earned it. He's been a head coach. He, he's he's been it. a coordinator many times in this league. Clearly, Mike, this is a bet on Baker Mayfield. Clearly this is, we got the overall number one pick. He was so much better with Kitchens than he was with Haley and Hugh Jackson. And what people are looking for now, and you see this, with Cliff Kingsbury as a hire with Josh Rosen. They're looking for a quarterback whisperer. Okay, so, That's what you so want. So let's go back to my original question. Right. Then why not just let that guy do his thing with this quarterback maybe they were that afraid. you feel you have so maybe much Maybe they were afraid in. they couldn't keep him unless they you made what, him the head coach. You know coach. what keeps everybody, and you know what the NFL teams have plenty of? Scratch. Money. Where well, Freddie Kitchen, where's he going? I don't you gonna know. demand the Alabama well, job? I, no. No, you're going to demand the Packer no, job? No. no, no he's no, going to go no. where they let him coach this kid yep. and pay him. But now he's the coach of the whole team. Do they know whether he can even handle this? Of course not. He's, uh, uh, until I, the middle of the year, he'd never even running been a coordinator. Coach. No. So, no. They don't know. As I said, it's wall-to-wall football coaching hires, Tony. So let's move just a little bit west, where John Elway and the Broncos are breaking my heart by taking defensive boss Vic Fangio away from the Bears. The hiring of Fangio goes against the grain in two ways. One, he's not a young pup. He's 60. And two, he's not a saucy offensive genius or quarterback whisperer, as you say. Yeah. Tone, do you think this radical departure from trying to find the next McVay or the next Shanahan is the right way for Denver to go? So this is correctly identified as the outlier because everybody else is going for offense, and this is a move... For defense, Um, the Bears were the best defensive team statistically in the year, in the whole league this year. If you recall, the last time the Broncos won a Super Bowl, it was mostly defense. Peyton Manning was at the end of his career, and it was Von Miller, and it was defense. They don't have, the Broncos don't have a young Turk at quarterback. They got Case Keenum who's going to be 31 years old. Nobody should whisper in his ear? Well, I'm thinking that for this team, for this franchise, particularly if Gary Kubiak comes back to run the offense, that this feels to me like the right hire for them. You don't think so? Or are you just angry that they're taking him from the Bears? Of course, I'm very annoyed about that. But in the bigger picture, Tony, I think it's fine for John Elway to double down on defense. If you think that's your strength, then play to it. Don't just, in a copycat league, have to go out and find a I agree with him. uber young guy who can only bond with the quarterback. Is that going to help Von Miller get to the quarterback, the other one, more? No, it's not. The other thing is, you know, there's a history of, of people trying to steal away, stealing away Bears defensive coaches and making them head coach. It didn't work as well with Buddy Ryan in the more celebrated no, case. No, it didn't. It worked to a degree. Philadelphia became a star team. They became a team everybody wanted. They were must-see TV, but they didn't win any playoff Can games. Can I ask the overriding question here, which is why anybody would want to work for John Elway, who really has a quick hook? 
And not only does he have a quick hook with coaches, but he hasn't been so good with quarterbacks. No. Trevor Simeon, Paxton Lynch, Brock Osweiler. I like Kingham, Paxton Lynch, where's but he he's not great. Osweiler he's not there on that team. You are what your record says you are. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. Okay. Since we closed yesterday's show, we learned the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have hired 66-year-old Bruce Arians away from the broadcast booth and made him their head coach. Reportedly, the Bucs believe that Arians can get the most out of Jameis Winston, who attended Arians' football camps as a middle schooler. Wilbon, does this feel like a step forward or a step backwards? I don't know what this feels like. A middle schooler? Really? Yeah. So, so I don't understand what that means. But, I, but, but here's where I'm not going to say it's a step backward, because Bruce Arians has proven himself to a degree, as, to a large degree, oh my God, yes. as a head coach. He went someplace where no one is ever, no one ever wins double-digit games, and he did it three times yeah. in about a six-year stretch. So Arians gets the benefit of the doubt to that extent. This feels to me like a short-term deal. This feels to me like they've hired Bruce Arians to be a mechanic for Jameis Winston. Fix the car. And, and yes, and if it doesn't work, then they'll both be out in a small amount of time. His record is extraordinary. Yeah, He's got is. a winning percentage of 635. And that doesn't even count the 9-3 and three when he was the interim coach at Indianapolis. He's worked with Andrew Luck. He's worked with Ben Roethlisberger. He's worked with Peyton Manning. I, I, I didn't expect this because I thought he said he'd only leave the booth for the Cleveland Browns. But I think it's good. Yeah, I, I, I think Arians is one of those guys. You, you don't pay attention as much to when he makes these grand pronouncements. He's got to go coach now. And if, look, we know that management there, the ownership there, has said Jameis Winston is our he's guy. guy. No matter how much trouble he occasionally seems to yeah. be, Off the field. he's yeah. our guy. Yep. So in that case, Tony, yes, they've got the situation that most demands a quarterback whisperer. Not just a quarterback whisperer, but this specific guy. Now, I don't know if he can fix him. You said he's tinkering under the hood. Well, I think, that's what, I think that if you are going to announce that we're making this higher because he attended the guy's camp as a middle schooler. He's 10 years then old. Then it's very, very specific to Bruce Arians and Jameis Winston, and they don't want to give up on Jameis Winston. But if it doesn't work soon, they'll give up on both, I think. Who coached you as a middle schooler? I didn't. A famous uh, guy middle coached school. you. Abraham Lincoln. No. Who? Larry, Larry Brown. Brown. Yeah, I was a grade schooler then, not even a middle schooler. I was younger than that. That's this is I was a failure for Larry away. Brown. I was <laughs> goes no good. Ways back. No good. We don't know who will be coaching Kyler Murray next year or even what sport he'll be playing, but the godfather of modern scouting, Gil Brandt, reminded us yesterday that he wouldn't be surprised if Murray returns to Oklahoma for another season of football. Tony, the kid figures to get rich either way, baseball or football. So knowing what you know right now, what would you advise Murray to do? So I understand the reasoning here. The reasoning is if you go right to the NFL draft, you're not giving baseball a full chance. You're not making rebounds, five assists. He was three of four from the three-point line. And after the game, Williamson said, quote, I kind of hate being classified as a dunker. Coach K wouldn't have recruited me if I was just a dunker, but I guess people on the outside don't understand that, unquote. Well, but has Williamson convinced you that he's more than just a dunker? Not yet. I, and I'll confess, I, I watched Williamson for one reason now. I just watch him to try and pick holes in his game relative to the NBA, not the college game, relative to the next, because that's what we're going to start dealing with him this summer. But, but, you, you, but to be fair, you're doing this because you think the Bulls have no, a no, chance no, no, of getting No, 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 no. I want to know whether this kid can play or not. And I'm not, I'm too impatient. I don't want to wait to actually see it. I want to know. I, I, I sit to pick holes. And so last night I sit there, I, I sit, I watch every game he plays. And I'm sitting there going, Matthew, he can't, he can't hit any threes. That's Boom, right. boom. He reminds me of Larry Johnson in some ways, and I don't just mean build, but he's so nimble around the basket. He explodes, yes, but he's clever around the basket to finish. He seems to have a little bit of a dribble, a little bit of a handle in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm watching. I, I don't know if he is yet more than a dunker. What do you think? You watch Duke all the time. I think right now he's a dunker, and I think that's because he can get his way inside on anybody What in about college. those threes last night? Well, I think he's fooling around with that. Those are not the threes. Fooling that around? Mike, those are not the threes he's going to get unguarded like that in the NBA. And he's, he's a grown man, and, and he should be playing in the NBA. Now, he's going to, it'll take him a year or two or something like that, but if people had doubts about him, you would hear him being projected as the 14th or 16th pick. He's the one Those pick. Those kind of doubts. He's the one pick. I mean, he's better than everybody in college. He's more spectacular. He's a helicopter. He goes straight up in the air 46 inches. 
I don't know what he is yet because he's not being challenged well, that's yet. That's right. But, Tony, we've not seen number one picks who people have expressed doubts about who couldn't do it at the next level. Or they do it to some degree. Or they do it five years in, Andrew Wiggins, and people are still saying, well, how come you couldn't get me 40 and 10 on another night? I think Those this, questions I are... I think this kid is more spectacular than that. He, okay. Right. Let's take a break. Coming up, Pat Mahomes gets all the attention, but would you rather have Andrew Luck on Saturday? And the Patriots are favorite, but are the Charges the better team? He's, he's compelling to watch. Zion but does Williams. it convey? I don't know. That, that's what I'm because watching Because he's for. playing against college kids. Okay, but you still got to project off that. He's not going to play against men before the dr- Tough people to make tough choices, which might be why Wilbon struggles in mm, toss-up. Yeah. What's first? Toss-up more likely to make it back to the championship game next year. Clemson or Alabama? So the easy answer is both. Because they are the best teams <laughs> by a wide margin. Yeah. They always play each other. They've got a lot of people coming back, including both quarterbacks are coming back. I'll choose Clemson, and I'll choose Clemson for this reason. I think it's easier to win the ACC than it is to win the SEC. I understand that Alabama has gone even when they haven't won the SEC, but that depends on the relative strength of other conferences. If you win your conference in the ACC, you're going, so I will say Clemson. Two reasons. One, it's easier to win the ACC. Two, let's recount who Clemson has coming back. Trevor Lawrence, yeah, the other worldly young yeah, yeah, quarterback. Yep. Yeah. T. Higgins, who makes catches like he's Jerry Rice as a freshman. Justin Ross. He's great. Travis Etienne, yeah. Amari Rogers. Yeah, they're good. That's why. Yeah. I mean, this is not that hard. I'm, I'm not going to say that Alabama's got talent too. They got college Tua. level sports are still about coaches primarily. It's not the pros where it's a players' league, but those guys. Next. They're good. Next, we agree. Next. Toss up. Who would you rather have on Saturday, Andrew Luck or Patrick Mahomes? So I think Mahomes is a supernova. I think he's been more exciting to watch than anybody out there this year. Can't wait to watch him. This is his first playoff game. Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, Mitch Trubisky, first playoff games and they all lost. Andrew Luck is 4-3 and three in playoff games. As great as Mahomes has been, Andrew Luck has had an extraordinary season coming back for an injury that some people thought he would never come back from. So I'm going to say Andrew Luck. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Luck, too. And really? I, I think playing on the road may be a help here. And I don't usually go that way. I mean, there's an obvious home field advantage in Kansas City. Sure, sure, okay? sure. But Mahomes and the Chiefs under so much pressure. See, people can say, but I wasn't here when they lost all those games. But you're there now. And you go to the dry cleaners and the PTA and to pick your kid up from school, and you hear it, and it mounts on you. And I think it even mounts on Mahomes until we see differently. The answer is luck. Next. Toss up who should be favored, the Chargers or the Patriots? So the Patriots are favored by four. That is the shortest price on the board at the moment. The Chargers are 8-1 and one now on the road. The Chargers are playing better right now than the Patriots. But the Patriots should be favored, and I'm going to tell you why they should be the favored. Because they're the Patriots. One is that they are the Patriots, and they never lose this game. In this well. particular game at home, under Bill Belichick, they are 11-1. and one. And one is the temperature is going to be below freezing for the whole game, and that's hard on the Chargers. That's hard on a team from Los Angeles or San Diego or wherever, wherever they're from. Southern Cal. Wherever Southern they're from. Cal. So, so though I think the Chargers have a real chance, the Patriots should be favored. The guy who's wearing the hood, what does this say on his chest? It says New England. Yeah. And the golden boy, the guy who's got more Super Bowls than says anybody. says 12 what, on his chest. And what, 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 what's the insignia? What's the brand It would be the Patriots. Okay, so this is, a, this is insane. There's, no, there's only one answer here. I don't care if the San Diego Chargers upset them. Who should be favored? Who would you go with? The answer is the Patriots. Do you think the Patriots will win? Think yeah, they'll win the absolutely. Game. So this is now, we've agreed absolutely. three times. This is now annoying. What's next? Last one, toss up. Which NFC East team is more likely to pull the upset? Okay. The Cowboys or the Eagles? So I'm not saying either is likely. I'm not saying that. I give the Cowboys a slightly better chance for this reason. One, under Sean McVay, genius quarterback whisperer that he is, they're 0-1 at home. They they're get? 0-1 at home. They don't have a very good run defense, and the Cowboys have a great runner. Ezekiel Elliott is a great runner. I think it's hard to go to New Orleans and win. I know Nick Foles is touched by magic in the playoffs. But Breeze and Peyton are 5-0 at home in New Orleans. I think it's a harder win in New Orleans than it is in Los Angeles. I think both of them can win. 
I think both of them will win. Well, you predicted that certainly the I, Eagles I'm not going to run away from the Eagles now after saying the yeah. Eagles-Bears winner they was going to go on the road no matter where they had to play and win. And so I think the Eagles, having been bounced around, thrown around like a rag doll previously by the Saints, yes. will not have that happen again. And I think the advantage, as Tony Dungy hinted to us yesterday, lies with the Eagles in this rematch. And I think the Cowboys, for the very reason you said, Ezekiel Elliott <sighs> might really be run. underrated, which yeah. is hard to be as celebrated as you are. The moment you put on a Dallas Cowboys uniform, you're usually overrated. Ezekiel Elliott, underrated. Tony, and Dak Prescott can run when he needs yeah. to to make plays. The scary thing is... I like is both of them. Both the Rams and the Saints can throw 50 at you. They can. They can, they but they're not going offense. to. That's it. Let's take a break, but still to come, the Warriors announce a target date for DeMarcus Cousins' return. And we'll get 26th birthday Marcus Peters. The two-time Pro Bowl cornerback is one of a number of big-name defensive players to join the Rams this year after having issues with their former teams. Peters with the Chiefs, Saqib Tlaib with the Broncos, and Dominic and Sue with everybody. Peters will defend Amari Cooper head-to-head -head on Saturday, try and take away the Cowboys' one deep passing threat. Tony, the popular pick of a team to be eliminated lately has become the Rams. They stumbled a little bit as of late, not in a big way, but you think they can go out? No, you think they can. We a just lot of people think this. they can. Happy anniversary, Carson Wentz. On this day just three years ago, you returned from a broken wrist to lead North Dakota State to a fifth straight 1AA championship. North Dakota State has continued to win without Carson Wentz. They won again this year, and their coach Chris Kleiman has been hired to replace Bill Snyder at Kansas State. It goes without saying that the Philadelphia Eagles have continued to win without Carson Wentz as well. If the Eagles go back to the Super Bowl, either win or lose once they get there, how do you? I don't know how, how you do get you rid put of Foles back on. I don't. How do you, I don't. How do you send them away or bench him? I don't know how you do that. A melancholy trails to Bernice Sandler, the godmother of Title IX, died over the weekend at age 90. While seeking to become a teacher at the University of Maryland in the late 60s, Sandler identified a systematic pattern of discrimination against women. Down the road, the result was Title IX, which brings economic equity to the funding of women's and men's athletic teams at colleges and university. And Title IX has opened up huge opportunities for women to play sports and get scholarships to college. You remember the 1995 Nike ad, If You Let Me Play? And it's talking about young women at the time in this ad. If you let me play sports, I will be 60% less likely to get breast cancer, more uh, less likely to be depressed, more likely to learn what it is to be strong, more likely to be more self-confident. And when, when I hear and see that commercial, I think of Ms. Sandler and her enormous contribution to this crusade. Uh, the effect of what she did far outweighs her name. Yes. I did not know her name. I know her deeds. One clarification, Clemson's T. Higgins is a sophomore. Justin Ross, Trevor Lawrence are freshmen. Young still the big finish. Let's do it. The NFL and NFLPA announced there's no evidence the league targeted Eric Reed with drug tests. Your thoughts? I don't know enough. Can we hear from Eric Reed at some point directly? Not even through Twitter. Just hear from him. Jalen Hurts entered his name into the NCAA transfer portal today. What, what does that mean? You get to go through time and space through the portal. I hope he ends up in Maryland with Mike Loxley, which is possible. DeMarcus Cousins will make his Warriors debut around January 18th. Is that a big deal? It means maybe the Warriors can get back to being the dominant team they have been. Because they're not there now, but he could help them there. Jerry Jones reportedly bought a 350-foot yacht with two helipads. You're impressed, aren't you? $250 million, and you can park your boat in his boat. Last one, Suns-Mavs tonight, Aiton versus Doncic. Who's the rookie of the year right now? Doncic now because a half season to go. Aiton's got some time to make up some ground. Out of time, we'll try and do better the next time. And I